Is Masterbook's math enough? I've seen this question a lot and I'd love to talk with you about math lessons for a living education. And I wanna share with you my experience in our family with this curriculum. Hey there, welcome to Joyful Noise Learning. I'm Ashley, if we haven't met yet. I have been homeschooling my kids since 2013. I have three kiddos, ages 10 down to age five. And I love to look for the joy among the chaos in life and in homeschooling. So that's what I have to talk about here on my channel. You can find a lot about affordable homeschooling resources, biblically based curriculum, and Charlotte Mason inspired homeschooling. All right, story time. Let's talk about how I got into math lessons for a living education. So when I started homeschooling, I didn't know what to do for math. <laughs> there was a lot out there. And I actually started with Horizons Math. When my daughter was in kindergarten, I looked at Singapore. I just looked at a lot of things. And then I landed on Horizons and that didn't work for us. After that, we moved to Right Start Math, which worked very well. I loved it, I still love it. And you can watch my review on it on my channel as well if you'd like to hear more about Right Start Math. I did claim to follow Charlotte Mason's style. And by the way, if you don't know your homeschooling style, I created a quiz to help you figure it out. So you can see the link to that in the description below and I'll help you uh, find your style with amongst all the five basic styles that are out there for homeschooling. So when my daughter was about first or second grade, um, I had a friend whose daughter was using Math Lessons for a Living Education and she was a couple years ahead of my daughter. And I watched her using it and it, I was really fascinated by it. I was like, oh, Charlotte Mason based math. There's cute stories and it looks very, very simple. And math for my daughter was just not coming naturally. She was not excited about it whatsoever. And there was usually just a lot of tears with math. She just did not want to do it. And with Right Start, I really enjoyed the hands-on approach, but the lessons were not clear, like where they started, where they started and where they ended. Uh, we did play the games and she was really learning a lot, but I was getting a little nervous about it and wanted to switch. So I looked at the levels of Math Lessons for Living Education at Master Books, and she fit right around level two. This was the middle of the year. It was probably January <laughs> and, and you always get that itch. Don't you, if you've been homeschooling for a while, you know that itch like halfway through the year, you're like, am I doing this right? Do I need to switch? Like I, if you haven't had that feeling yet, I'm sure you will be having it soon. Um, but it often comes about halfway through the school year. If you start in August, September and February, January, even December, sometimes it comes and you were like, what? should I switch to? <laughs> so I was one of those moms who decided to switch in the middle of the year. And so we started in the middle of level two. I skipped, I bought the level two book. Um, this is her level five book, but I bought the level two book, went about halfway, looked at what she already knew and what she needed to still learn. And then we started halfway and it worked out just fine. And then the, after she finished that, she went right into level three. And after she finished that, she went light, right into level four. And now she's um, almost halfway through level five. So we've done level two through level five so far. So now that you know my background and my relationship with Master Books Math, let's share a few of the pros and cons that I've experienced uh, with Master Books Math. All right, number one pro is the short lessons. That was really what drew me to it. And that is a huge Charlotte Mason style uh, uh, principle. And my daughter really liked it. <laughs> she liked being able to get it done in about 10 minutes. She was able to do math every day. It was clear, it was concise, and we enjoyed the short, simple lessons. It is a really easy to follow workbook. Basically open and go, read the lesson, do the practice problems, and you're done. I like how they break it up. Each lesson is one week, and then, then they break it up by days. So the lesson is the same topic for the whole week and then you have five days on that same topic. And then there's review sprinkled all throughout each of the lessons. And then at the end on exercise day five is usually a fun little thing to do like this crossword puzzle or a real life um, math experience like a recipe they get to make something. Uh, one time she got to make a quilt. One time she had to measure all the rooms in the house and then draw a diagram of it on a big piece of paper. Um, so just real life hands-on experiences, which I actually really liked. So yeah, that's my next pro is the real life math examples. It's not a lot, 
Um, it's maybe every four lessons. There's a in-depth real life example, but there are in there. I also liked the gentler approach. <laughs> uh, that's my next pro is having a gentle approach, not having a ton of practice problems. I've seen other curriculums. I won't name any names. I've experienced some other curriculums where it was just way overwhelming and math just was not, not fun. I like that this one didn't have a lot. I preferred for it to be just do a few, make sure you understand it and move on. So as far as the cons for math lessons with for living education, I've realized a few things as we've gotten to level five. Again, I every year I do that thinking, okay, am I doing this right? Is this math curriculum fitting for her? Um, but I think I'm realizing a few of these things that are not working for us that I've had to do to make it work. So number one is it needs supplements. I added in a lot, I really did. Um, there were many times where the lesson didn't give enough. It was really short and uh, simple. So as far as what I supplemented with, I noticed that there was not a lot of math facts practice. And at first that what I felt was good, but as we were going along, there wasn't really a way to help her memorize the addition facts or subtraction facts or et cetera, et cetera. So I added in some games from Math Facts That Stick by Kate Snow. These are incredible resource. <laughs> this is an incredible resource, so good. I've talked about it many times before on my channel before. You know I love Kate Snow. And I love her because she teaches homeschool moms who are not like naturally good at math on how to teach math. She has amazing resources and games and just great things to help kids learn uh, at home. I've also supplemented with some videos so when we hit level four and we hit division, or not we, but my daughter, um, I noticed that she was having trouble understanding it just from what was explained in the book. So I tried to explain to her what I knew about division and what I knew how to teach it, and it was not going anywhere. It was, it was just not jiving. She did not get it. <laughs> and, and I was like, I have no idea how else to explain it to you. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> that was it. That's all I got. So um, I found online, I was like, let's look it up on YouTube, see if there's some videos. And I found Math Antics. Math Antics is incredible. They have uh, short and concise and clear uh, videos on math concepts for kids. Uh, they have visuals that are very appealing and just, just really well done. Really, really well done videos for someone who's not naturally good at math. So now that we are going through level five, I was slowing down just a little bit on what she's learning in level five, and we're just practicing multiplication and division facts to help her memorize them in order to move on. So I pulled in the handy dandy drill sheet, and I never, never, ever thought I would use these. I never thought they would be useful, really. I remember I did not like them as a kid, and I thought, oh, maybe kids don't need to practice that much. They don't need drill sheets. It'll make kids hate math, and that was totally my belief about math. But it turns out that sometimes drilling them on it and like having them do it quickly and see if they can do it faster next time can be really helpful for them to understand the math facts. And so I swallowed my pride and <laughs> decided to try it. And she actually is doing really well with it. So I'll put a link in the description below the math facts um, sheets that I found online. They are free. Um, I also have a video coming up soon about free resources and curriculum for math coming up so you can subscribe to make sure you don't miss that. As far as more supplements that we used to go along with ma uh, to go along with Master Books Math, I did have my Right Start Math curriculum pro um, supplies still, so I went back to Right Start a little bit and pulled out some of the some of the manipulatives and games that we had with that. We added that back in. And lastly, I did add Life of Fred as well. So I did that with all of my kids. I started on the first book, and we just read one book after the other. Um, I think we've read five or six now and um, I just read it to them during our morning time. So I really do think I probably could have stuck it out with Right Start Math and she would have been okay. Um, but I know, you know, it's not the end of the world. She's still young. Like, even though I felt like Master Books Math was not enough, um, it's still okay. She did learn things and I was able to adapt and add the things in that she needed to help continue to grow in, in that area. So in conclusion, the gentler approach was helpful for us getting math done and checking it off our list for the day, but it really is not enough for us as we have found uh, as a complete math curriculum. I am not positive if I will continue on with Master Books Math next. I probably won't, so I'm looking at something for after this level or even 
in the next coming months uh, for fifth and sixth grade. Um, if you have any suggestions, I would love to hear what you have used and what you love for your kids that don't love math. <laughs> so uh, maybe kids who are not naturally at math that can do it, but just don't love it. I am trying out teaching textbooks right now, and I think we might be leaning that way for her. Um, and there's a few others I'm also looking at to try out. If you are curious about how to best pick curriculum that best fits your family, or maybe you're just getting started out in homeschooling, I have an ebook called Ready, Set, Homeschool. It's a step-by-step -step guide to get started homeschooling and it helps you wade through all the options out there of curriculum uh, and be able to pick one that best fits you or your kids or your whole family. So you can check that out in the description below. And I'd love to help you get ready for your first years of homeschooling. And even if it's not your very first year, it can still be helpful for trying to, trying to just get your feet wet and to continue to pick ones that fit really well. Make sure you subscribe to see next month is all dedicated to affordable homeschooling hacks, such as free and affordable math resources, as well as how to buy used curriculum. So I can't wait to share those with you guys. Thanks for being here. You rock at homeschooling. Go find your joy among the noise. I will see you next time.